Let the peace, love and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The kingdom of Jehovah God and His Christ. Part 1. First lesson, Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. Second lesson, John 16, verse 14. Golden text, John 18, verse 36. Quote, Brethren, today is the gospel read to you fulfilled in your ears. When you listen to the lessons, they sound in your ears like parables are fairy tales and very far from being understood are very strange and unintelligible language but today the lessons are being fulfilled in your ears the instrument and rain is power in the world and love in the kingdom the kingdom of this world is quite different from the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ that I am going to reveal to the entire world. The government of the world uses power, intimidation, torture, quarreling and fighting to compel complete obedience from the citizens. A father uses power, threat, corporal punishment and starvation to compel his children to submit to him. A wife and husband use quarreling and fighting, threat and intimidation and power to compel obedience from one another. But the government of our Lord Jesus Christ is not administered in that way. It is love that is used in administering. He uses truth humility, patience, righteousness, and meekness to rule. This, therefore, is virtually the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is to say that you should be prepared at all times to do good and practice the word of God. You should devote your time in the service of God and in doing good to your fellow man. You should have no association nor concern yourself with anything, whether people manhandle you or hate or love you. Whoever wants to remain, encourage him to remain, and whoever wants to withdraw, he can withdraw, because there is no problem in the kingdom of God. You will notice that the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ is the best. It was for this kingdom that all the disciples died. When they were persecuted, hated, imprisoned, beheaded, burnt at stake, they neither defended themselves nor resisted the powers that be. In spite of our claims for the revelation and publication of the first step to God, the second step to God, and third step to God, what I am going to reveal to you in this gospel is the actual kingdom of Jehovah God and His Christ. This revelation should be published into a pamphlet titled The Kingdom of God. This era is witnessing the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. The theme of the Bible to be written will be the reign of Christ. This is to indicate to you that at the time of the apostles there were weapons of war like the gun, the sword, the spear, the staves, but the disciples did not use any of these weapons to fight against those who persecuted, imprisoned and killed them because they were operating under the supreme reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the beginning of the world Men like Abraham, David, Moses and many others had been attempting to develop this doctrine, but none of them could do it. The more you endeavor to live peaceably with all men, 
the more the people of the world will seek to behead you or kill or imprison or torture you. Once you profess to be a man of God, all forms of temptation will beset you and the people will fight against you in order to quench or at best to diminish the glory of God. Somebody may obtain money from you and will not refund it again. Another person wants a house to live in and you rent your house to him and he refuses paying rent. If you ask him, he will curse you and beat you up. As a result of this state of affairs, you are compelled to adopt the law of retaliation, an eye for an eye, because you are exhausted for your patience. In the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, no person charges for any services rendered, nor gives precondition for rendering services. All services are rendered gratis and with love without any form of gratification when you render the service whether the man you are serving appreciates what you are doing or not whether he thank you for it or not you should not bother yourself at all this indeed is the essence of being under grace since you are under grace if any person comes to ask your daughter's hand in marriage, you have to give her out without receiving any bride price. Your daughter is taken by the man free of charge. If your son-in-law knows that we are in the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will reciprocate your good gesture. If he has a motor car, he will give it to you. Build a story building for you and do many other things for you. That is the condition in the kingdom of God in which our Lord Jesus Christ reigns. In this new kingdom also, you do not need to be told to render any service. Whether you do not need to be told to render any service, whether to sweep the floor or fetch water, in the morning, you know that the floor should be swept. And so you take your broom and sweep. Another person will fetch water. And yet another person will cook. And another will wash clothes. If you do not employ yourself in doing anything, no person asks you why have you not done it or why you have done it. Whatever we do in the kingdom, we have to apply the virtues of peace, truth, and love in our lives. You do not have to constitute yourself into a stumbling block to any person. Be you a man or a woman, you should not be truthful to somebody that he should believe in you. You do not tell the truth that you should be loved but you are truthful and to another because truth is one of the attributes of this kingdom of God and truth is also the glory of God. To remain under the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ means that you have to be truthful. Kingdom based on love. You do not love any person so that he may reciprocate that love or that he may give you money but you love him because love is the kingdom of God. And since you are under the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ in this kingdom, you have to love in order to maintain that attribute. Love, which invariably is the kingdom, is now being revealed in this final era. Kingdom based on humility. In this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, every person must humble himself. Humility is a very important condition in the kingdom. Whatever is your disposition in life, whether you are a child, an adult, or an old man, 
whether you are a man or a woman, whether you are, you are rich or poor, educated or illiterate, you have to humble yourself. This, in effect, is the glory of God, which is neither the glory of the world nor the glory of man. Kingdom based on patience. In this new kingdom also, it is incumbent upon every person to possess the virtue of patience. Patience works experience. You do not have to quarrel and fight, bite and devour one another, but you have to exercise patience always towards other men. Nothing is done in a disorderly and confused manner. Neither should any person be exasperated against another person, nor to beat him up, nor oppress him. That is not the order in this kingdom, because God is not the author of confusion. All those who lack these attributes or qualities have no share in the kingdom, and they are in another country which is not of God. For in the kingdom of God, every person has to be humble, truthful, loving, patient, meek, and lowly in heart. You do not send out any person on an errand and call him in order to demand obedience from him. There is no form of exasperation in this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pomposity and arrogance are not required in this kingdom of Christ for every person lives by the word of God. You would remember when our Lord Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes till they were filled and there was taken up fragments that remained to them 12 baskets and he strictly warned that they should not allow any fragment to remain unpicked. What do you understand by this statement? It signifies that all the Gospels of God must be practiced. Not even the slightest word of God should be left unpracticed, for this is one of the standing principles in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Tradition of the Kingdom the gospel has advice that you should not resist an evildoer. The children of this kingdom are definitely aware that it is not expedient to resist an evildoer. They are accustomed to this principle and practice and so no matter what offense somebody has committed against them, they should not resist him. It is an inborn tendency in them. You are also advised not to hate any person. All the injunctions given are the behaviors, the attributes of this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is through abiding by the injunctions that you see the manifestation of the glory of God. If you are a child in this kingdom, you do not need to pass an order to any person to stand up or sit down or to do anything. Every child in this kingdom knows what to do at any time. Every person should be directed by his spirit to do something. In this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is only joy, no quarreling. You live by observation because it is the word of God which directs. You have heard what has been said by him, that he will lead unto the living fountains of water, and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. The doctrines delivered to you are meant to lead you to the accurate wisdom of truth. This kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is love, peace, and truth. No person struggles for anything. No person possesses or claims anything as his bona fide property. No person claims another person to be his wife or child or relation. 
No person asks any question. There is no quarreling, no fighting, and no differentiation of persons. You will observe that all the words of God, predictions and prophecies nominated in the Holy Scriptures will become consummate in this kingdom and you will testify about the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why it is said that no person can do anything by his own volition except it is given him from above. This kingdom cannot be revealed by any other person except by the Father. And the Father has revealed the kingdom by the words of the scriptures that the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall cover you with his mighty wings. He will feed you and will lead you unto the living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. All the words of the scriptures are fulfilled. This lends credence to the statement that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. People will come into this kingdom because of food, our sickness, our money, our children, or for one reason or the other. Since they had their hopes in these things, they will withdraw because they do not possess the virtues of love, patience, humility, truth, and faith, and it is and it was not written about them. If the Father does not give you the ability to if the Father does not give you the ability, you cannot practice this gospel. This is the end of time, and all the gospels from Genesis have now been summarized for you, and it is incumbent upon you to practice them without exempting yourself from practicing some. Do not tell lies in this kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Falsehood is not admitted. Anger, quarreling, fighting, and craftiness are not required also. If any person withdraws from here, it should not bother you to ask him where he goes to. He has withdrawn because he is not one of us. Do not disturb your mind about this, about his withdrawal, because he can go anywhere. He will he will be irregular to go and plead with him to come back or to ask him why he has withdrawn. There is no need pleading with him because he cannot be there. His name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life and he is not one of us. But you should rather love him. Tell him the truth. Be humble and patient with him. Since he is not one of us, he will not be able to fit himself into the kingdom. Judge no man. God is the only judge. In this kingdom, no person judges the other. How will you judge one who does not practice the gospel of God? He has been advised not to be angry, not to find fault and impute sins on others, and because he has indulged in these sins, he is found wanting and has no share in the kingdom of God. If because of his inability he opts to go away, then allow him to take leave. There is no other kingdom which can be compared with the kingdom of ours, which is the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. And this marks the end of all kingdoms, as he said, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and show it unto you. All what our Lord Jesus Christ preached and died for, and our prayer is that he should allow the kingdom of God to come. The kingdom has now come, because he has revealed his love, 
His glory, His patience, His truth, His mercy, His joy, and His righteousness. A great many people take exception, exception to the instruction that we should not beat and rough handle our children or wives. They feel children are wayward and recalcitrant and without beating them, they cannot be corrected. In this kingdom, no person should be flogged. You should not impose corporal punishment on your child, no matter what he does. A child should be left to choose between obedience and disobedience. Love all, including your enemies. This is the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of Moses, in which was preached the gospel of retaliation, an eye for an eye. Revenge was the order of the day, but in this kingdom every person should live according to the culture of the kingdom. There is no fastidiousness, no regrets, no denials. You must not add or subtract. That is the kingdom you have been praying for. In it, you do not have to resist an evildoer. If somebody asks for anything, do not fail to give him. And you should love every person, including your enemies. You do not have to show any expression of exasperation. No action of your fellow man should prompt you to be angry. It is only love and joy. That is why a great many people withdrew from brotherhood after watching what is obtaining in there and are convinced that they are unfit and incapable of practicing the gospel. In that community, they withdraw because they are not ours. If you are not one of us, you will take leave of us and no person will inquire from you where you are going to be. You, because it is revealed that this kingdom does not belong to you and you have no share in it. But no person is expelled from here. No person offers money or bribery to plead with you to come into brotherhood. Such offers are made in the kingdoms of the world as a sort of inducement for people to remain in them. No person tells you the truth so that you can be truthful to him. No person loves you so that you may reciprocate the love, but you express these because they are the attributes of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ which was promised. God's virtue is the culture of the kingdom of Christ. As you are aware, there are as different languages as, as there are different countries. The different ethnic groups have their different customs, traditions, cultures and behaviors. The tradition and culture of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ consists in love, truth, mercy, righteousness, meekness, humility, honesty, and self-control. Wherever the children of the kingdom go to, they will witness for the truth. They will have no connection with evil and will not conceive in their hearts what is evil. They only know how to do good. They do not know what is evil. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. He continued to say, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. It is not a matter of making badges with the inscriptions, Jehovah, or Jesus, or Jehovah God, or Jehovah Jah, or Jehovah Elo Elohim, and wearing them across your chest. It is not a matter of shouting the name Jesus, Jesus at the top of your voice along the street. It is not a matter of putting on large, flowing, spotless, white 
and dazzling gown. It is not based on song and music, even as you sing melodiously with angelic voices till the earth is shaken. It is not based on your dexterous and flexible dances. It is rather based on meekness, humility, love, peace, truth, self-control, and lowliness of heart. Wherever the children of the kingdom go to, they do not generate causes for trouble. They are not exasperated. They do not hate. They always walk uprightly. They continue to be loving patient, humble, meek, peaceful and truthful. Since God is the embodiment of love, truth, patience, peace and other virtues, they also must show the expression of these virtues in practical ways because they are the likeness of God in which they are all created. By their fruits you shall know them. Wherever they go to, they are easily identified by their behaviors, ways of life, words and deeds, their footsteps and their general conduct. They have no problem because they seek nothing from any person. If they come to your home, they will carry food to you. And if you go to their houses, they will still give you food. They do not ask you to fetch water or firewood for them. They do not ask you why you visit them or why you do not or why you do one thing or the other. They do not appear bothered about what others do. They do not show the expression of these virtues that you may love, honor, or do good to them. But they do these things as a condition of the kingdom so that they may reveal the glory of Jehovah God and his Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ had said when he taught his disciples how to pray, Let us do on earth as it is done in heaven. The practical expression of the virtues is exactly what is done in heaven. And the same thing should be done on earth. God does not do anything for you that you may reciprocate his gesture or that you may love him or that you may praise and magnify him but he does them to reveal his kingdom because he is the embodiment of the virtues including doing good. They shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles. Observe how this kingdom is holy, beautiful, shining, and good. In it, there is no theft, no quarreling, no malice, no person is, is begrudged, no backbiting. This explains why the scriptures attest that the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the thieves, the fornicators, the liars, the warmongers, the sorcerers, and idolaters will have no share in the kingdom. A great many of you think that there will be a very true, a very true which your wives, friends, or husband will report you to God that you are fornicators and adulterers or thieves or liars they will not report to you but god knows what you are and if you persist in these vices then it is certain that you are not meant for the kingdom of our lord jesus christ many people argue that a badge should be designed in order to identify those who are the children of god the children of God are known by their behaviors, conducts, and ways of life because they are never given to exasperation or sighing or fastidiousness or murmuring or lamentation or weeping. 
Satan has, has no adverse comments to make against the children of God because they do not indulge in any act of sin for Satan to capitalize on. The worldly people also have nothing to say against the children of this kingdom. It is for such persons that our Lord Jesus Christ has said, My kingdom is not of this world. A place where there is no anger, quarreling, misunderstanding, theft, envy, and division is considered and referred to as the kingdom of God. Such is the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. This explains why he was addressed as a demented fellow and he said nothing. He was called a thief. Others spat on him, but the symbolism of his suffering was not revealed then. And it is only now that it is manifested. He was always referred to as a mentally deranged fellow. That is why if you are called Jesus, you will refute that telling people you are not Jesus that it was only the Son of God who could suffer such afflictions. This is indicative of the fact that you have denied the Sonship of this kingdom. And can one person build a city? One man cannot build a city. That is why when people ill-treated him spat on him, disregarded and despised him, called him names and blasphemed against his holy name. He did not retaliate. It was not that he had no power to have retaliated, but if he had exercised his power, he would not have been the Christ of God because he wanted to witness the manifestation of his father's kingdom. Every person lives by observation. In the kingdom of God, no person is exalted or abased. No person is judged with a view to justifying or condemning him. By observation, every child of this kingdom knows exactly what to do because each of them has known the prevailing conditions in the kingdom and so as to apply the conditions judiciously in leading his life, behavior, conduct, and culture. They have become acclimatized with the prevailing condition and they do not know of any other way of life apart from love. They have never learned of evil and so they do not practice evil. As a result of these inborn attributes, they do not know anything evil, but they are accustomed to love, truth, patience, humility, temperance, and honesty. So, brethren, we shall now have our first lesson read. First lesson, Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears away from their eyes. The kingdom of Christ is a paradise. Brethren, hear what is read unto you. The condition of this kingdom does not require prayers. In the kingdom, no person suffers any type of heat because there is no heat and so and no scorching heat of the sun and no person is drenched by rain and there is no hunger because the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will cover them with his mighty wings and will feed them he will lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Minimum entry qualification is total abstinence from sin. Do not doubt, as I always tell you, that you do not know where you are and the invitation extended to you. If you were to know this, 
you would have complied when you are advised to forsake sin. But you believe that you will change gradually. If you want to change gradually for a period of a hundred years, it means during the hundred years you are outside the kingdom. If you intend to gradually change in 200 years time, then for that period of time you will have not changed completely. If you continue to rain abuses on others, then you will continue to be in the world. If anger still lingers with you, then you cannot enter. No person prevents you from entering into the kingdom, but you prevent yourself since your sin is ever before you. Each person acknowledges his sin and he or she cannot enter. God knows everything. Many of you console yourself that the leader does not know of what sins you are still committing. I know all of you because every person carries with him either the mark of God or the mark of the beast on his forehead. If the mark of God is on your forehead, you will not be annoyed. You will not tell lies, prostitute about, indulge in the preparations of concoction. You will neither pronounce woe on any person, nor aid any person. You will not be a burden to any person. You will not wish to lord it over any person. It is said, Behold, the world passes away with its glory and loss, but the glory of God will endure forever. Very shortly, you will witness this world, the manifestation of its glory. No person is known in the flesh. Roguery, prostitution, fighting, money, all are glories of this world and not the glory of God. In this kingdom, no person is known as a man or as a woman. No person is known as a child or an adult, but you are known by your behavior. You are not recognized by the insp inspiring sermons you deliver because Satan himself preaches very well. He can preach to an extent of you sleeping away during which time he cuts off your head and plunders your goods. You are not recognized by your going to stay in somebody's house on bended knees, always kneeling down or by sweeping the floor, singing and dancing. But after one week, you set the house ablaze. If you come across somebody who tells the truth today and tomorrow, and after that he plunges into falsehood, such a person is not a child of God. If you come across somebody who is very kind, generous, and benevolent, he is also humble for three months. But after that he begins to regret that upon what he has done, no person has appreciated it. And for that reason, he will no longer be humble. Such a person is not a child of God. The form in which the children of God are created is love, truth, and righteousness. They are unchangeable, for there is no variableness in them. The kingdom is not meat or drink but righteousness. I have not come to preach or to dance, but to reveal the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ to the entire world. Whether people are already in the kingdom or not in it, or they still have the intention to enter, every person will see this kingdom of God as he predicted. You can have money, children, motor cars and other mundane things, these are all glories of the world. You can be a thief, a king, a prime minister, a president. These positions relate to the glories of the world, but not the glory of God and his Christ. What I am giving you now are the things which relate to the kingdom of God. There are no hospitals, neither are they the army and police force. 
What are soldiers going to shoot? What will police protect? And what will the law court judge? Every person is an embodiment of love, peace, patience, mercy, truth, joy, and humility. In the kingdom, no person looks up to the other person and no person hopes on another. Every person hopes on God. A friend will not preach to a friend because all the words preached to a friend are in our hearts, but we have a duty to perform and that is to practice the words that and that is to practice the words received. These words which dwell in your in you provide illumination through which you can walk circumspectly. The incompatibility of kingdom of the world and kingdom of God. In the kingdom of the world, if you are if you are advised if you advise any person to forsake sin, he will regard it as an insult or as a disgrace and will be angry with you. If you advise him not to indulge in concoction, he will ask you whether you want every person to die and that God establish the system of necromancy. This is indicative of the fact that preaching does not change or reform a man. Instead of reforming people, it causes confusion and trouble. This is the time of the separation of the sheep from the goat. If you always quarrel, get exasperated and look for carnal things, it means you are worldly and you have been separated. Consequently, conversely, if you are content with your position in life and are not lustful, if you do not commit fornication, tell lies and get angry, it means you are a child of God and you will, carry, and you will tarry in the kingdom. That is why I tell you that a single person cannot build a city for it is only one person who has these attributes. The kingdom of God will not be easily recognized and his glory will not be revealed. While the disciples worked very diligently, the kingdom could not be revealed because as they went about doing good, the evil men waxed stronger also operated and there was nothing this, the disciples could do. The evil men will not appreciate what you have done. Instead, they will persecute and hate you, cast you into prison, disgrace and kill you. They will ask you to invite your God to help you.